We got to talk about Kawhi. News broke that he's going to be pulled from Team USA heading into Paris this offseason because of lingering knee issues that have been going on for literally the past two to three months now, which is really, really concerning. As Team USA put out a statement saying, Kawhi has been ramping up for the Olympics over the past several weeks and had a few strong practices in Las Vegas. He felt ready to compete. However, he respects that Team USA basketball and the Clippers determined it's in his best interest to spend the remainder of the summer preparing for the upcoming season rather than participating in the Olympic Games in Paris. Which all of this is really crazy and it spawns a bunch of questions such as who's going to replace Kawhi? There's already reports claiming that Derek White is the strong candidate over Jalen Brown which kind of left a lot of people questioning how is that even possible? Jalen Brown is coming off of a really really great postseason run, finals MVP, Eastern Conference finals MVP and moreover a lot of people feel like it's just a more natural fit. Both of them are similar height size build, both play the forward position and it's not that hard to believe that Jalen Brown will be able to fulfill the same role and responsibility that Kawhi was going to provide. However, to be fair to the decision makers out in Team USA, three-point shooting and spacing is at a premium in the Olympics because the three-point line is closer to the basket and bigs can just roam around the lane. So that's definitely a problem. However, Jalen Brown did not miss the opportunity to play into conspiracy theories on Twitter, playing into this idea that this is Nike's doing behind the scenes, uh, puppeteers with everyone. Now, personally, I don't think that has a lot to do with it. Even Grant Hill pointed out to the fact that he wore felines and he's a part of Team USA, so I don't, I don't necessarily know. And there are other players on the team that are not associated to Nike and they're on the team as well. So sure, I do think that it is interesting that both Kyrie and Jalen Brown are not on the team and they have their quorums with Nike, but I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think it has a lot more to do with floor spacing, but nevertheless, that's one interesting talking point. However, the talking point that I want to touch upon and I think a lot of people should be discussing is Kawhi. What does this mean for his future, his career? And in particular, what does this mean for the Clippers? Because this offseason was a massive one for the Clippers as they shift in a different direction without Paul George but yet they've already made the commitment to a player that cannot stay available. But before we get into all that, first I have to ask, bro, how did we even get here? Because I don't even know why Kawhi was even participating in any of these events whatsoever. So if Kawhi was never even prepared to play playoff basketball, I don't know how we even got to the point where he was ramping up to play Olympic ball this close to the Olympics starting. Be very mindful, this news broke basically, I believe, either the day before or the day of the first showcase game against Canada. And the fact that we're this close and it's just now breaking is really, really concerning. And what's even crazier is that I've watched some of the clips that have been floating around, some of the practices, especially against the select team, and Kawhi clearly did not look 100% healthy. He was like kind of walking stiffly. I think many people just assume that's just how he's going to walk moving forward, but it was clear that he was not 100%. But beyond that, a much bigger question that I think a lot of people constantly ask themselves is that, bro, is this ever going to end with Kawhi or is this just who he is as a basketball player moving forward? And what does this mean for his future? future in the NBA and even for the Clippers. So just as a quick timeline into jogging memory and why a lot of this is really, really crazy, Kawhi hasn't played basketball effectively since April 1st. Sure, he's probably practiced with the Clippers and Team USA, and he did play two playoff games. The last regular season game that Kawhi Leonard played was March 31st. He then proceeded the remainder of the regular season, missed game one, played game two and three, where he combined for roughly around 58 to 59 minutes within those two games, and then proceeded to miss the remainder of the first round as the Clippers were knocked out by the Dallas Mavericks, and they certainly could have used his help and his expertise out there. And it sucks because, A, bro, Kawhi Leonard is a really, really, really great player. The fact that we continue to miss out on him in the postseason is sickening, especially as someone who's at the stage of his career where retirement is probably right around the corner. He's in his mid-30s, mid to early 30s, and I cannot imagine after this contract that he just signed with the Clippers back in January that he's going to be playing that many more games. And what's even more concerning is that there are still rumors claiming that these are still knee issues that he's been dealing with over the past couple of years. So let me give you another timeline because like I said before, this is a reoccurring issue with him. It's ongoing and that's why I'm really, really concerned for who Kawhi is going to be moving forward. 2017, Kawhi gets injured by Zaza Pachulia in the second round against the Golden State Warriors, missed the remainder of that postseason run and then proceeds to basically miss all of 2018 with a quad injury. He plays 2019, makes it all the way to the NBA finals, but as a sidebar, didn't look 100% healthy by the end of that postseason run, but to be fair to him, he still played, and we're going to credit that. 2020 played all the way through that entire run, but also to give proper context, the NBA had a five-month gap in between the regular season and playoffs, basically, because of COVID, so I don't necessarily know if that's a normal situation, but since 2020, torn ACL in 2021, recovered from the ACL injury all of 2022, torn a meniscus in 2023, and this season had had 
knee inflammation that, again, was so bad that basically kept him sidelined for a whole month of basketball and actually you still keep him sidelined to this day. That's really, really concerning. If you stop and think about it, and it's something that I've acknowledged, if you are at a stage of your career when you're trying to compete for championships, you have to ask yourself, are you prepared to play basketball every other day for an entire month straight? Even when you look at the Boston Celtics and they were just knocking out teams in like four or five games in the second round conference finals and the NBA finals, bro, even they had to play a large amount of games within a finite amount of time. Between the second round in the NBA Finals, 14 games within a 40-day sample size, something that I don't know if Kawhi has ever done in his career beyond 2019. And then I stopped and I asked myself, when's the last time Kawhi has ever played 14 consecutive games, period? Okay, this year, he did that. 2023, he didn't do that. 2022, he obviously didn't do it because he was recovering from his ACL. 2021, he didn't do it. 2020, he did do it, but it was the in-between break with the COVID. I don't necessarily know if you want to count that. 2019, he didn't do that and still they got into the playoffs and like I said before he didn't look 100% healthy then 2018 he clearly didn't do that either and then going back to 2017 he was able to do that and looked prepared to not only do that in the regular season but also in the playoffs so basically the last time that Kawhi has played 14 or 15 consecutive games dates all the way back to 2019 in the playoff run and then before that 2017. That's crazy. Furthermore, if you are Kawhi, you are getting at a point in your career where the accolades, I don't necessarily know if he has enough to be considered an all-time great the way that his career trajectory was at one point. Be very mindful that in year three, Kawhi was already a champion, a finals MVP. By year five, he won his first DPOY. Year six, he wins his second DPOY and finished second in the MVP race. And at age 25, Kawhi was already a 25 point per game score, preparing to lead the Spurs to a deep postseason run, one of the best two-way players the league has ever seen, MVP candidate, and was clearly one of the top five to seven players in the NBA. And at his absolute peak, it seemed as if like he was on trajectory to be as good as anybody we've ever seen. That got a bit derailed in 2017. He picked up a lot of that value back in 2019 when he won another championship with the Toronto Raptors as well as a finals MVP. But ever since then, it's really gone downhill. A player that was poised in position to be one of the top, I don't know, 15 to 20 players of all time, I don't necessarily know if I can feel confident in putting him even top 30, 35 in large part because he's just never really available. And even when he was playing basketball at a consistent level this season, the level in which he played at was nowhere near close to where it once was, which is all understandable. He's dealing with severe knee issues, so that makes sense. But it kind of really does beg the question on who Kawhi Leonard is as a player, not only of all time, but in the NBA today, which then kind of swings us to the Clippers question. I feel like Kawhi just bamboozled the Clippers. They changed the rules to playing 65 games to make all NBA. This is the first time that Kawhi has played over 65 games in a regular season since 2017. How it's even possible he's getting older and playing more games? Coincidence. I don't think so. You can think so i don't he does that in the same year that he's looking for a contract extension to try to maximize as much money as he possibly can so he goes out there plays the amount of games and before we even get to the end of the season the clippers hand him over a contract where he's making 50 million dollars in the upcoming years and them believing that he's going to be prepared to play basketball and commit to this team in a way in which that could result in a championship and yet it falls apart once more by the end of the year that is crazy and if you are the clippers you have to feel some type of way because that contract not only conflicts what happened with Paul George as PG felt like he was obligated to make similar if not the exact same money actually probably a little bit more based off of the the dynamics and the conversations that he was having on his podcast nevertheless that type of money you gave him gave PG the leverage and the obligation to ask for that type of money which then effectively meant that you lost him in the process which now means you're moving in a direction where it's Harden and Kawhi which is really bad because if we're going to be honest with ourselves, Paul George has undeniably been more valuable to the Clippers because of his availability. Again, not saying that he's the better player, but he is the one who was constantly available and ready to push his team into a deep postseason run. But because you already committed to Kawhi, I do believe that is a huge reason why you could not commit to Paul George. And you're kind of stuck in this situation right now where you're going into another year, two or three, crossing your fingers, hoping that you don't get bite in the backside because you committed to the wrong front court player or the wrong wing player instead of the one that's constantly been available to you and you lost him just because you didn't have the funds in doing so. Which then brings me to the other problem here and that's this new CBA. Signing a bad contract potentially in the new CBA 
Bro, you're screwed. I'm looking at Brandon Ingram not being able to sign a contract right now because everyone is scared to just throw any type of money at him. I'm looking at the Bulls not being able to move off of Zach Levine's contract. Matter of fact, they might have to put on a draft pick just to move him. As if like Zach Levine is a terrible player just because of how much money he's making. So the fact that Kawhi this upcoming year is making 52 million and the next two years after that he's making 50 million, there's no way anybody in the NBA would ever touch that with the 10 foot pole even when it's an expiring contract just solely based off of the fact of how much money he's making so if you're the clippers you've made a commitment that not only has subsequently effectively lost paul george in the process but committed to a player under a new cba to the tune of 50 million dollars making Kawhi one of the highest paid players in the league but he's never even available to play at the level that is necessary for him to play at for y'all to win and even if he is available can he play at that level most of the Stats look really similar to what they were back in his prime around six rebounds, three to four assists, a steal, a block, shooting splits, and we never have to question this with Kawhi. 52, 42, 88 and a half, really, really great. But the scoring and the lack of aggressiveness, and especially when you watch it in real time, it's what's really telling. Around 23 to 24 points this season, that is basically the lowest that he's averaged since his 2016 campaign. But possibly a um, bit more concerning is his defense because that's something that Kawhi really utilizes separate himself from other star caliber players about a couple of years ago he's just not the same defender that he once was so is this type of player a really great scorer prolific at almost all levels really good shot creator post-up player really solid rebounder for his position but in a league where a lot of what Kawhi does it's become at a premium or what he's supposed to be is a premium like the advantage that Kawhi had seven years ago doesn't really exist anymore because his archetype has been reproduced and mass produced so much so in today's league that I don't really know if this version of Kawhi really separates himself from much of anyone else and I don't necessarily know if Kawhi at this level is good enough actually I don't even let me not say I don't know why am I beating around a bush man fuck it bro he ain't that good it's done Clippers you're cut y'all gave this man 50 million dollars to do what sit on the bench that's crazy that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever so then because you end up tying yourself up with Kawhi's contract before we got to this point you gave him money because you thought that these games he was playing was who he really was then this nigga's knee went out again at on you at the end of the season. You're done. We ain't even gotta go into the trade. Wait, y'all, y'all lost shade for this? The draft pick that turned out to be Jaime Hawkins, y'all lost that for this? I want to be clear. A lot of people talk about Doc Rivers, the bench, Paul George, James Harden, in large part because those players and coaches have been there to disappoint you. Kawhi is always on the bench. So I think he skates a lot of the criticism. And to be fair, a lot of people going to be like, oh, yeah, how you going to criticize somebody who's hurt? And that's, and, that's, and that's fair. But I criticize it because the brother pumped fake y'all and played as many games he possibly could so he can get his contract extension in the middle of the year. And you all gave him 50 50 million a year bro and y'all didn't even wait to see what he was going to look like at the end of the season bet i bet it wow, i bet all of my money and my savings right now if they could do that again they would have waited to the end of the year to figure out if he could actually finish off the season because that's what you should be paying Kawhi for we all know when he's healthy he's there he plays at a level that is suffice enough to at least make this team look interesting in a postseason but when he's not we've seen it it's a first round exit at this point bro we didn't even talk about the fact that Bro, that this could be it for Kawhi. The fact that this man has basically only played an hour of basketball since April up until now, and he's still not prepared to play Olympic basketball. That nigga can't even be Larry Bird in 92. When Bird was just at the end of the bench, just sitting there really doing nothing. You're telling me he can't even do that? Regardless of how people want to cut it and slice it, Paul George at any point with the time with the Clippers, we all understood he could never be the best player on a championship team. James Harden this point point never could be the best player on a championship team the way that the roster was constructed it was constructed in a way where Paul George and Kawhi were supposed to be the pseudo Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan hasn't looked like that at all this entire time I, I wish the best for Kawhi because I truly believe in the postseason he is like he's a special player but in this playoff run for him to stop playing basketball in the regular season in March have like two to three weeks off and he could only muster up in the two games he played in the playoffs 12 points eight rebounds and two assists shooting splits of 46 0 and 66 bro you stopped playing basketball in march and you still weren't ready to play playoff basketball
That's a real problem. And I think more people should be taking this as the end of not only the Clippers, but the end of one of the greatest performers over the past 10 years as we know him. But yo, y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the subscribe button, notification bell. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Peace.